To start assembling your thrust vectoring mount, grab the motor tube out of this bag. Then take one of the tiny silver linkage stoppers out of the small parts bag, as well as the 1.5mm hex wrench. You'll also need two of the smaller sized M3.5 screws. Grab that tiny linkage stopper and screw it in to the smallest hole at the bottom of the motor mount. The fit between the two may be a little bit tight, but that's okay. Out of the small parts bag, grab one of the push rods that has just one bend in it. Using the hex wrench, loosen the linkage stopper a little bit, insert the push rod, then tighten it down with the wrench again. It doesn't need to be super tight, we're just holding it in place for now. Next up, the motor mount needs a liner. Grab a piece of 29mm motor tube and a spent motor if you have one. Cut a section from the motor tube just about 10 centimeters in length. We want it to be slightly longer than the plastic part. We also want a little friction between the two, so we'll wrap the paper motor tube in tape. Insert the liner into the plastic part, and then the spent motor after that. The motor tube is slightly flexible, so the spent motor helps it keep its shape. Next up, we're going to grab the inner gimbal from this bag. This part still has a lot of support material attached from the 3D printing process, so we need to remove that. Some of the support material comes off pretty easy, but other parts may require tools or more force to remove. There may be some support material inside these screw holes as well, which you'll also want to remove. With that taken care of, slide the inner gimbal over the top of the motor mount tube. Make sure those screw holes line up, and then it's time to screw it in with the two small M3.5 screws. Your mount should be able to rotate freely back and forth like this, even if there's a little bit of friction. From this bag, grab one of the two servos. With the servo's wire and arm pointing down, insert it into the bottom of the inner gimbal. Go ahead and thread the cable behind the back of the servo as well. Using the hex wrench again, loosen and then take out the push rod from earlier. Going from the hole nearest the center, count one, two, three, and insert the bent end of the push rod there. Now thread the push rod back through the linkage stopper. Straighten out the servo just a little bit, then grab two of the M2 screws from the small parts bag. Using a small screwdriver, secure the servo into the inner gimbal using these two screws. There's one hole at the top and one at the bottom. Once again, straighten out the servo and this time the motor mount too. Once they look pretty well aligned, tighten down the linkage stopper again, this time very tightly. The alignment between the two doesn't have to be perfect. We can fix this later, but make sure that the linkage stopper is very tight because we do not want this coming loose. Right here on the inner gimbal, there's a little clamp to hold the Y-axis servo cable. You may need to pry the clamp open with a screwdriver a little bit, but once the cable is in there, it'll help prevent jams in the thrust vectoring mount. Going back to the bag from before, take the outer gimbal out. We're gonna need to remove the support material from this one too. Just like those flight computer brackets, the inner and outer gimbal both have stars on them and they both need to face the same direction. With those aligned, take the outer gimbal and slide it over the motor mount and inner gimbal. The outer gimbal should sort of snap in place. Grab two of the shorter M3.5 screws and use them to attach the outer gimbal to the inner gimbal. The friction between the outer and inner gimbal felt a little bit too high to me, so using the drill, I over tightened the screws just a little bit. By doing this, the screw holes get slightly stripped and the parts move together more easily. Now from the small parts bag, grab the other push rod, the one with more bends in it. We're going to insert the right side of the rod into the inner gimbal. The fit between these two is intentionally very tight and you'll probably need to use pliers to insert the push rod all the way. Once that's done, the push rod should be able to rotate freely. Next, grab the other thrust vectoring servo and once again, count from the center one, two, three, and insert the push rod there. This time, the servo cable and arm should be pointing upward, but you wanna make sure that the servo cable is threaded inside the mount and not outside, or it will interfere with your rocket's airframe. From the small parts bag, grab two more of the M2 screws. Using these, secure the top and bottom of the outer gimbal servo, otherwise known as the X-axis servo. Then take the servo cable from the Y-axis or inner gimbal and thread it up through the thrust vectoring mount. Now you can manually move the mount to see if your X and Y axes are both working correctly. With rockets, there is no room for ambiguity or error. We're gonna use a silver Sharpie to label the X axis and Y axis servos correctly. Starting with the Y axis servo, we'll label the black part at the end of the cable with a Y. 
We'll do the exact same for the x-axis servo as well. We need to do the same thing on the TVC extension cables that come with the kit. Each cable on both ends and on both sides should be labeled X or Y. With this complete, it's time to plug the servo cables into the extension cables. Of course, make sure the letters match up, but also make sure the wires match up. The orange should go to the white wire, the brown to the black, and the red to the red. Plug them both in tightly to make sure they're secure. To finish this up, grab a few centimeters of masking tape. We need to wrap up the joints between the two cables. The goal is to make sure they don't come undone. Grab the slack in the X servo cable and bunch it up into the tape. By doing this, we're making the X and Y servo cables equal length, and this will help us avoid jams. Finally, fold the tape over itself a few times to make sure everything is secure. Now, it's time to wire the thrust vectoring mount to the flight computer. When you plug the cables in, make sure they're in the right orientation. The white wire should be closer to the top of the computer, and the black wire should be closer to the bottom. With that complete, it's time to turn on signal R2. When the computer boots up, click on signal R2 and go into system prefs. You can tap the TVC test button to give your thrust vectoring mount a try. This button makes the TVC mount slowly go between plus and minus 5 degrees on each axis. In this TVC mount, the X axis is a little misaligned. Usually the motor should be straight up and down, but right now it's at an angle. We can fix this by going into thrust vectoring, tapping advanced, and then using the TVC servo alignment buttons. Each time you push the plus or minus buttons in the app, you change the center point of the mount by a fraction of a degree. First we took care of the X axis, but it looks like the Y axis is a little bit off as well, so we'll hit the minus button a few times to straighten it out. It's no problem if these values aren't exact right now. We're just getting familiar with the app, and we can fine tune this more later. I'll hit the TVC test button again, just for fun, and then we're all set to move on to the next step. 